All right, let's integrate across a vertical asymptote and see what happens. So first I want to show what would happen if we sort of just naively computed the integral by guessing the antiderivative and plugging in the limits of integration. Something goes really wrong. So that would be like the antiderivative of x to the negative 2. That would be x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 or negative 1 over x. Then I could plug in my limits of integration. And plugging in the upper limit would give me a negative 1. Then I subtract what I get when I plug in the lower limit, which is a positive 1. And I come out with an area of negative 2, which is clearly impossible because my function is above the x-axis. I know that I've got positive signed area here. So something has gone wrong. And the issue is that we're sort of hiding an infinity in this. When x is equal to 0, this thing blows up to infinity. And I need to carefully split my integration integral at that problematic point and compute the integral on the left and right side separately. So when I do that, my original integral breaks into the integral from negative 1 to 0, 1 over x squared dx plus the integral from 0 to 1, 1 over x squared dx. And even writing it this way um, it is a little bit dangerous because that 0, when I plug it in for x, gives me an infinity. So the way to be really careful with this is to call that upper limit a t and take the limit as I get close to the problematic point. So I have the limit t goes to 0 from the left and that's going to be a critical part of this in a minute integral negative 1 to t 1 over x squared dx plus the limit as t goes to 0 from the right so th this is where my x values are positive integral from t to 1 1 over x squared dx. Okay, and then of course guessing the antiderivative is, is just the same difficulty it was before. I get negative 1 over x for that. And in this first one I have the limit as t goes to 0 from the left. Negative 1 over x evaluated from negative 1 to t. And then I have a plus limit as t goes to 0 from the right. negative 1 over x evaluated from t to 1. So evaluating across the limits of integration in the first term, I end up with the limit as t goes to 0 from the left, negative 1 over t, and then minus what I get when I plug in the lower limit, and we're in one of those situations where we have three minus signs interacting, so it can get a little bit treacherous. Well, two of them cancel out. And then I have the limit as t goes to 0 from the right. And I plug in my limits of integration. So the upper limit gives me a negative 1. I subtract what I get when I put in the lower limit. Okay, and then the limit of a constant is just a constant. So I'm going to pull that out of this first one. I have a negative 1 in there. When I take the limit, I just get negative 1. In the second one, I have a limit of negative 1 as well. So I'm just going to collect those out in front. And then I have these two interesting limits. The limit as t goes to 0 from the left of negative 1 over t. So keep in mind t is a negative number there in the entire time in the limit and then I have the limit as t goes to 0 from the right of positive 1 over t so it's interesting to see this negative 2 reappear um, but the real value of the integral is found from these limits if t is approaching 0 from the left it means it's a negative number which means negative 1 over t is a positive number 
And as I get closer and closer to dividing by zero, it's becoming infinite. So that's a plus infinity. The second limit, t approaches zero from the right. One over t is positive. That's another plus infinity. And of course, infinity plus infinity is infinity. And infinity minus two is infinity. So I get a plus infinity out here, meaning the area that I've shaded in here, if I go all the way up the y-axis, is actually going to be an infinite amount of area. So I can say that this integral equals infinity, or I could say the integral diverges. I want to add a small note on this problem of how I would really handle it as a physicist. Um, first off, I would take advantage of symmetry here and say that's an even function integrated on an interval symmetric about the origin. So I only have to do half the integral. And then I would guess the antiderivative and evaluate across the endpoints. And when I plug in the upper limit, I would get a negative 2. And when I plug in the lower limit, I would see immediately that I'm dividing by 0. In other words, this thing is blowing up to infinity. Okay, so treating it less formally, we can do it a lot more efficiently, and we still come up with the same answer that this thing diverges to infinity.